Initiation. The virtue of doubt is on the path to renewal. This is a journey or exile that appears on the surface to be a journey into the depths of the soul and history. However, its meaning and significance is directed to the present and the future in search of the causes of our current situation and the effective inherited mind. It is also a question about how we can build a new mind that supports the civilizational process and stimulates progress based on the logic of reality without delusions or imagination that we fly within the void. A journey to the depths of the content of consciousness slash brain that I have always wished for an expert scientist to undertake for me in search of the layers of the Arab unconscious that governs behavior and approach. Dealing with reality and thought, a journey whose goal is to explore the depths of the mind in search of hidden 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 secrets that represent the beginning of the event, but its manifestations are clear on the outside. Roots are denied and even confiscated, even though they remain active, influential, and ruling. They form what we can call the structure of meaning or the effective and influential cultural framework through which we see the image of existence, formulates for us the nature of behavior, and imparts in the soul a feeling of contentment, sufficiency, and self-reliance, and that there is no need for more. A journey whose goal is an answer to the question, how do we think and work in our lives as individuals and groups, content with our absolute confidence in our inherited cultural heritage, instead of researching and studying the changes that are taking place? How do disasters and shocks continue in our lives so that we do not change ourselves, our reality, and our thoughts? Rather, our efforts take another path, and we interpret the disaster in a way that pushes us more and more to escape reality? How do we see the highest good and the ideal, the meaning, the image, the symbol, and the assumed truth in our lives and monitor for it the throes of our efforts and our existence? How do we see our image, the image of the self as an individual or a group, the human being in terms of his existence, origins, role and destiny? a fate that is the direction of activity if there is activity in reality or figuratively. Our motivation for the journey that we distance ourselves over extended generations from embarking on and searching for its unknown is the clear paradox between the cultures slash visions slash behavior slash frameworks of thought of societies and the manifestations of all of this in what is called the creation of civilization or the reconstruction of the earth or in competition, conflict, and challenge from for the sake of distinct survival, victory, and victory over the other and perhaps defeating him and paving the way for development for the one who is more effective according to the law of existence, more able to adapt, and richer in the factors of flexibility and mobility that he possesses, and the result of all of this in application is in the form of occupying a position of center or marginalization. Where do we see, by virtue of our culture, the scope for competition, excellence and challenge? But sacrifice and martyrdom? Or in brief, what made us pray to others? We previously said in our book, Heritage and History, that the cultures of the peoples of the world are divided into three distinct categories in terms of the centrality of man societys relationship with heaven, without denying any of them. This is because the first man, who had an upright stature and walked on two feet with his hands free, saw the world in a completely new image. He saw the world in the three dimensions of space with the dimension of time, and space and time have now merged together. Heaven was the most important and biggest event in his life. With the development of the effectiveness and skill of the hands, the development of the brain and memory, the ability to memorize and the capacity to comprehend, his memories were deposited in a distinction between success and failure. From his effectiveness, he formulated what we call culture, which develops with the development of this collective activity. This is why cultures always reveal the nature of the spatial or environmental and ecological differentiation of man society because it is the product of man and his activity in a location with a distinct nature, capabilities, and characteristics, and at a distinct time. Culture develops thanks to and as a result of the development of this activity, with which man also develops. This is why culture also reveals the effectiveness, stagnation slash motion, or stillness that characterizes society. The person slash society produces thought resulting from this activity with the reality of his life. Thought develops and is renewed with the development and renewal of the subject of activity. Experiences accumulate, revealing elements of support, reinforcement, success, and factors of failure. Man slash society formulates from these deposits, memories, the harvest of experiences and expertise, its cultural framework that formulates the image of the world and the nature, boundaries and requirements of behavior with it. The dialectical evolutionary relationship remains, or so is theoretically assumed, between social action and thought slash culture. We notice in all of this that the image of the sky is active and influential throughout history. 
But the image varied from one culture to another and the limits, horizons, and requirements for human slash society's effectiveness varied, just as the image of the self and its duties and goals on earth varied accordingly. If we consider the cultures of peoples through this perspective, we find significant differences and clear historical influence. These differences are represented in the area of effectiveness and responsibility that belongs to both heaven and man on earth. Man's space is almost completely absent in primitive, stagnant, and backward societies, and heaven absorbs man's will to the point of negation and cancellation. The scope of human responsibility and will expands during the stages of advancement and the emergence of hope in developing life. Will, responsibility, and the mastermind have the greatest role. This is not a denial of heaven, but rather an enhancement of the responsibility and role of man slash society, and an affirmation of the role of the creative, renewed mind in directing the affairs of the world, which we have come to call secularism. This is why societies are in stages of advancement. That is, the stages of transformation, transition, and hope of advancement. She returns to herself and contemplates her inherited culture with a critical mind in light of her needs. It re-examines and sorts its cultural heritage and assets, revealing the factors of shortcomings and the inability to interpret and accomplish what is new, or the factors hindering movement, moving forward, competition, and challenge in the race to enhance civilizational existence. This is how all societies are in the stages of advancement. They began to doubt and re-evaluate without denying the reality of civilizational expansion and without denying the effectiveness of the legacy of the past in the past and its impotence now. Here, with the increase in social productive activity, society produces a new thought that is the product and harvest of this cohesive activity that unites man slash society slash environment slash science and technology in a dialectical unity. Such was Europe in the Age of Enlightenment, such was Japan, such was China, and such was the Islamic society in its civilizational renaissance when the previous, i.e. the inherited, was considered ignorance. That is, it has lost its validity. And then it was an invitation to the new. But now, and for many generations, we have not known the meaning of doubt, we have turned away from innovation, we have not known the meaning of exercising the mind, and we have not known the meaning of producing existence in defiance with others, so thought has been disrupted along with the disruption of productive social action. That is why we have become stagnant, living the legacy in its mythical form without rational understanding or criticism, and putting it in charge of our affairs without realizing the paradox of time and place, because our feet do not stand on the ground of reality. But the arrow of time does not return backwards, nor does it remain fixed in a place. Rather, it goes forward and leaves behind those who neglected doubt, the drive for innovation, and dismissed the critical, creative mind. Shaki Galil, Cairo 2008 AD